Hello, Jacob here again. Today, bringing you something a bit different. Today is the start of a Let's Play. Specifically, a Let's Play of Euro Truck Simulator 2. So, all my videos up, up to this point have kind of been first impressions videos. Kind of me just playing a game, the first kind of, you know, hour or two of the game and just seeing what it's like and you know, seeing if they're any good or not. I've kind of decided that I am... I'm still going to do those videos. And I'm going to chuck in... Or I'm going to start doing a Let's Play of this game. And, uh, well, it's, it's going to be a bit different. It's not going to be a kind of typical Let's Play. Basically, it's going to be kind of a... A mix of a Let's Play with a kind of podcast, I guess. Didn't, wasn't quite ready there. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna kind of play play a casual game, so kind of something like Euro Truck Simulator. Obviously, it's a fairly casual little experience, and you know the game is kind of more as a the game is kind of here more as just a kind of um, as background kind of viewing, whilst I uh, do a bit of talking, maybe just kind of uh, you know discuss a, discuss a topic, discuss uh, kind of gaming, and yeah, we'll go from there. So we're gonna play. Euro Truck Simulator 2. Let's do this. I've already uh, done a little bit of basic setup. I uh, always need to choose our city here. I'll probably just uh, go with uh, Cardiff over here. Seeing as that's the uh, closest to where I live. I live sort of around here. So Cardiff is kind of the closest to where I live. So I'll go to Cardiff. Uh, okay, go for the tutorial. Why not? Alright, welcome to Euro Truck Simulator 2. The first thing we're going to do is... Uh, let's see, at last, you have a chance to experience your dream job. You know what, being a trucker actually kind of is my dream job in a way. I would, I'd actually quite like to be a trucker. Yeah, your own transportation company is now both business, but sadly lack money. Yeah, okay, we got that. Task is to safely deliver a load of tomatoes. Oh, excuse me. Do a goodie stock in Cardiff. Your employers provided you with a vehicle. Yep, we got that. All right, press E to start the engine. Well, we're accelerating. Is the uh, I think the uh, handbrake was on. Possibly. Okay, we're not moving. Oh, we're going backwards. Okay, we're going forwards. I'm not sure what I did there. I'm playing with uh, automatic controls just because uh, I don't really want to. Uh, you know, I want this to be a fairly casual experience. Okay, we can change camera. One, two, three. Use camera, bumper camera. Oh shit, we're going to the fucking traffic here. Uh, yeah, okay, we got all that, thank you. Center. Uh, see where you need to go, press F1. Sat nav, yeah, yeah, we know what a sat nav is, thank you. Yeah, we don't really need any of that. S six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Yep, yeah, we're good. What the uh, sat nav, please? Oh, that's F five, okay. Six F five. So F1 kind of uh, pauses the game, I guess. Yep. All right, let's go deliver these uh, tomatoes. So let's make sure there's a. Uh, let's uh, come on. Oh shoot! Hit the fucking curb. So. Uh, 
Euro Truck Simulator 2 doesn't mess around when it says in it uh, calls itself a, a simulator game. So at the uh, roundabout here. Okay, let's go. Uh, if you live in America, you're probably not too familiar with what, uh, what a roundabout is. Enter the dock. Yep. All right. Okay, so you need to park the truck here. All right, we're going to uh, let's skip the parking for now. Yeah, headquarters looks uh, pretty shit to be honest. Well, it certainly is. Thank you. So uh, this. Uh, okay, progress. Yeah, okay. So this is us here. Pick one of the kind of most um, meanest characters you can kind of go for. He's a. Uh, you wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley, I guess. He looks a bit scary. So let's get a new, let's get a new job. All right, quick job. Uh, let's see here. What's this? Guard is to Southampton. Take job. So this hit the open road. I've no idea. I'm kind of just. Uh, uh, how do we reverse? Okay, that's uh, indicators. Okay, oh, I see. There you go, in reverse now. We crashed. That's not good. Alright, let's get onto the road. Okay, there's a car coming. Let's give way. We're going to play this game properly. Coming, let's go. What are the sat nav? So yeah, the basic idea I've kind of got for this kind of let's play is that I'm going to. It's kind of going to be. It's going to be kind of a podcast as much as it is a let's play. I guess it's the best way to describe it. I'm just going to play these kind of uh, these kind of um, casual kind of games and just kind of shoot the shit really and just talk about what I want, what I want to talk about. So I thought I'd start off. This is kind of episode talking about uh, Street Fighter V, I guess. Ooh, red light. It's not to uh, check the red light because uh, we will be fined, I believe. It's turning to green anyway. But yeah, so Street Fighter V obviously came out uh, a couple of weeks ago now, or a week ago, and it has uh, been quite a controversial release, to say the, the least. Um, I've not played Street Fighter V myself. Okay, let's go for the green light. Yeah, on the way to Southampton. The lights are green. We're in the wrong lane as well. Let's uh, put our indicator on. Check our mirror. Being a good driver. Okay, well, off we go. Yeah, it's been quite controversial. Obviously, the uh, launch was... Um, not the greatest of launches. Uh, there was quite a few server issues and connection problems that people kind of had on the launch. And obviously, uh, there's a quite a bit of missing content in the game. Uh, there's basically for there may as well be no single player in the game. There's no really. Uh, it's kind of like a survival mode in the game and a very very basic story mode. I, I thought I'd talk about Street Fighter Five and uh, kind of. Uh, kind of game launches in general and kind of how uh, I don't know, AAA kind of the uh, AAA publishers kind of taking the piss really uh, like this has happened so many times though where a game has come out oh I almost forgot um, I was going to turn the volume down a bit because uh, yeah let's just turn the volume down slightly because I want the game uh, me out here, very professional, of course. 
I mean, we can turn the radar right down, we won't be using that. For obvious reasons. Uh, actually, we might, uh, we might, we might uh, move on to that topic after Street Fighter Five about uh, content ID, because uh, that's also something else that's been causing a bit of a stir recently. But yeah, let's talk about Street Fighter Five and kind of games taking the piss. Uh, like, how many times now has a AAA game come out and it's just been an, a shit show? I mean. I guess Street Fighter Five isn't quite a shit show. It's not quite that bad. I mean, people are pretty annoyed with the game, but I mean, the basic kind of gist of Street Fighter Five seems to be that people uh, they like the game, and they think it. Well, I think some people really like the game. I mean, it's, it's a you know, it's a really good Street Fighter game. It kind of is kind of got all these kind of big problems around it, like uh, with lack of content, connection issues, and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, you think these AAA publishers would have learned um, learned their lesson by now? Like this happened with uh, the Master Chief Collection. That that game was just a disaster. Yeah, Sim City, the one that came out in uh, was it 2013? The last Sim City game that came out that was a disaster as well. Diablo 3 was a disaster. Uh, trying to think what else. Um, oh, let's break. Yeah, we're going to give way, don't you worry. So I shouldn't have too much problem uh, driving through uh, on these English roads, because um, I've got quite a, bit, quite a bit of experience driving on uh, in the UK, and riding a bike on the road in the UK as well. I should, probably should have indicated there, actually. Bit of a new bearer there, that's okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what, what other games have kind of come out and been... What's this guy doing? Is he overtaken? Cheeky bastard. Wow, what a fucking prick. Are we going that slow? Uh, yeah, what other games have come out? Uh, those are kind of the ones that spring to mind. There's been other ones as well. Uh, I just can't think of them off the top of my head, what other games have come out of, that have just been absolute mess. Oh yeah, Battlefield 4, that's another one. That was a uh, shit show as well. Okay, let's indicate left here. Get onto the motorway. Take a left turn. Probably slow down a bit too much there, but we're okay. But I just don't understand how how this happens like, time and time again. I mean, you think that the you think that um, a company like Capcom would kind of see what's happened with these other games and kind of try and kind of realise that releasing your game in a similar state is gonna oh we're already on the motorway. Okay, it's turn nine to get her off. It's not going to end well for you, you know. It just looks, just looks awful, really. When you, when you kind of see these games coming out and they're just lacking in content or just straight up broken sometimes. It's really not. Oh, I need you to go took a swell, the cheeky bastard. Then I guess that's kind of how the motorway works. Kind of a. Uh, we're in what people call the uh, the slow lane, I guess. Even though that's not really how motorways work. But we are only going 36 miles an hour, which is pretty slow for a, kind of a motorway. Although there was a sign there that said 50. Even though the motorway is 70, so I guess we're not on the motorway? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean... It's, it's not really acceptable, is it, to kind of have these games coming out and they're just being... Messes, like, uh, coming out as a mess. You know, Street Fighter Five isn't quite a mess. But what I don't understand is why ooh, we're getting a bit close on this red car here. Like how this keeps happening because um, it's not as if releasing a game is that. Like it's almost as if they kind of don't tr trust the, the old business model, I guess, to to work. But there's been so many games that have come out which have just, you know, no nonsense. Just here's the game, finished. You know bug free all the content give us the money and you can have the game I mean Fallout 4 had its problems but it came out had the content in there and it was you know apart from the kind of uh, performance issues that that game had it you know it was a uh, had all the content it was a solid release and sold sold really well and Witcher 3 did the same didn't have to have all this kind of bullshit attached to it 
for some reason these companies kind of think that they can keep they can keep doing this you know and people will just do they think people just forget or don't care or or are, are people who kind of complain about these things just kind of uh kind of the very loud minority he may be i mean uh maybe street fighter 5 will sell you know millions of copies and people making a fuss about it don't really matter that much i mean the fact they bought it kind of shows that um it doesn't really matter i guess i think that's probably the biggest problem is that even though these uh these things happen these big releases people still kind of go out and buy them anyway i mean i bought battlefield 4 and then there's plenty of people who uh bought diablo 3 that was sold uh shit tons of copies you know maybe uh if you want to send a message that this is not acceptable maybe we shouldn't really be buying these games i guess i don't know just a little just a few little thoughts there by me i guess i mean street fighter 5 is far is uh far from the kind of worst offender i guess I mean, Diablo 3 is probably the worst because that game came out and just it's basically a broken product for like a week or uh, I, mean, I don't know certainly the first few days the game just didn't work because it had this always online DRM in it so I guess you uh, you're, you probably know already know about that if you're watching this video so uh, we've got another two hours to go to Southampton <laughs> This is kind of how I came up with this idea to kind of do this. Okay, well this car's ever taking us on the left. Let's let him go by. Uh, yeah, because uh, obviously a uh, let's. Oh shit, we missed the turning there. There's obviously not a whole lot I can really say about Euro Truck Simulator 2. Really, we're gonna have to turn around somewhere because it is just this for hours. That's fine, but. Uh, there's not a whole lot I can really say other than I'm driving down the motorway. Uh, yeah, what, what was I talking about? Yeah, Diablo 3. I think that's probably the biggest problem is that a lot of these publishers would probably would probably stop doing these sh uh, these kind of shitty things if people just said no, we're not buying a game, just straight up, no. I think, but but. Uh, we're all kind of, I think most people are kind of uh, guilty of um, just buying the game anyway. I mean, there's been times in the past where people have said, oh, we're boycotting this game, we're not going to buy it. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2, oddly enough, was uh, one of those. There was a bit of a boy. There was. Um, shit, we're going to. You know, let's keep, try and keep the truck straight. Yeah, there was a, a supposed boycott for Left 4 Dead 2 because people were pissed off at that. Um, Valve coming out with a sequel so quick for Left 4 Dead. But I mean, to be honest, we all bought Left 4 Dead 2, didn't we? All those people who said they were going to boycott it bought the game. Of course they did. So, what can you do, I guess? Publishers are going to keep doing these shitty things and people are going to carry on buying the games, I guess. So, you just turn around somewhere. You could be kind of a. Uh, I think we might just go through one of these uh, middle barriers here. Oh shit, no, we can't do that. Let's change lane. Let's give a bit of indication what we're doing. Oh. Let's just turn around here. So, um, I'm uh, disobeying the traffic rules. Don't really care. Oh, I'm getting a bit low on fuel. Yeah, that's that's kind of all I've got to say, really. I'm just kind of uh, testing the water with this kind of format at the moment, just to see uh, see how it goes. So yeah, like I mentioned earlier about uh, content ID, there's been a uh, been a whole thing recently. Uh, there's like a hashtag going on Twitter. Is it uh, WTFU or something? Where's the fair use on YouTube? That's a uh, that's been causing a bit of a stir recently as well. Uh, there's been uh, a couple of YouTube channels recently, quite well, one uh, fairly large one, one smaller one that have uh, 
been affected by YouTube's uh, copyright hammer. Uh, there's some anime channel which I've not heard of before. It's called something like Four Star or something. I don't know. But uh, their channel got uh, free copyright strikes and was briefly down from YouTube. And then uh, that guy with the glasses, he's got his own YouTube channel. I can't remember what channel awesome or something it's called. Yeah, he he's, um, he's had copyright strikes on his uh, on his channel, and he kind of had to. Um, he like had like two or three weeks or something where he had no monetization on his channel. Yeah, that was a. Uh, I wouldn't want. Uh, it's kind of scary, really. How uh, well, it's been it's been covered by uh, Jim Sterling has done quite extensive coverage on this topic. His recent Jim acquisition on it was uh, quite good. But yeah, the whole copyright situation on YouTube is pretty dire. How it all works. Yeah, it's basically the um, basically there's this uh, whole kind of uh, shoot first, ask questions later policy that YouTube seems to have. Where if you're kind of a oh, good turn left here. Whereas if you're a content creator on YouTube, basically, uh, oh, can, ooh. is there a giveaway? Nothing coming. Nope. Yeah, basically, if you get a, if you get like a, a copyright strike or a content ID claim, that video's basically had it. With no, uh, you know, the video's taken down, monetization review um, removed, and you can't really do a whole lot about it. Really, you can obviously do a counterclaim against it. But apart from that, I mean, it takes a really long time for a start doing the whole counterclaim thing. But uh, I've got, I haven't got any experience with it, um, with it myself, obviously. I'm just this little uh, channel with zero subscribers, and this is like uh, 17 videos, so I've not been hit by it myself yet. I'm not, well, I've not even made a penny off of YouTube yet. But uh, not, not complaining, of course. Have more beginnings and all that. But yeah, that's pretty much all you can really do if you get hit by one of these st strikes is just counterclaim it. I mean, whoever owns the content can just strike at will without really thinking about it. Don't really have to provide any proof of why of the kind of infringing content or anything. Of course, there's uh, hashtags going around of uh, where it's a fair use because, uh, you know, and that guy with the glasses, he does his kind of... Uh, movie reviews and stuff which you know they fall into fair use in American law at least and I think I think fair use is fairly common really in most countries most uh, kind of civilised countries anyway uh, yeah I mean these videos are you know reviews of games or reviews of movies and stuff you know there's no reason why a company should be allowed to strike one of those with no kind of questions asked or anything Especially when people's livelihoods kind of rely so heavily on YouTube. I mean, I know a lot of people kind of say the whole. Uh, a lot of people kind of moan about it and say you're not really entitled to anything on YouTube, you get a real job and all and all that kind of thing. But yeah, people people earn their living on YouTube, you know. And it's real, it's real, real shitty that somebody who does movie reviews can just have their their life fucked with basically. I mean, when you lose a job, when you when you, you know when you can't make money, your life's kind of fucked. Especially in America as well. I mean, at least in this country, there's a safety net for you. But I mean, well, I don't know how American welfare works, but you know, it's just wrong. It's not crash here. The funny thing is, I think most of these companies know what what they're doing is wrong because uh, I've never I've never heard of a case where a video is being copyright striked or taken down and it hasn't been reinstated eventually. They know exactly what they're doing; they're just being assholes. Yeah, I can't think of a single example where a video has been taken down by 
a copyright strike or whatever, or monetization has been taken away and hasn't been given back eventually. Because pretty much all these content IDs and strikes are, you know, 99% of them are bullshit. You know, if you're doing a movie review, doing a let's play, you know, that's your work. You made that. Some of some guy who, you know, Nintendo are one of the uh, worst offenders. And Nintendo don't own a let's play of somebody playing. They own the game, but they don't own the let's play or the review, do they? Yeah, it's, it's, it is. It is quite weird. It would be interesting if if one of these. Um, cases ever did go to court, like if Nintendo took somebody's review down on YouTube and had to go to court, then presumably Nintendo would lose. You'd think they would. But then I guess they got billions of dollars. I mean, even with uh, the whole kind of... Because YouTube kind of brought this thing in where they'll, they'll give you a million... They'll give a certain... Well, it's hard, it's hard to really say how big of a deal it is because only four videos that, that were uh, affected by this. There was um, Jim Sterling's video was one of these, but um, yeah, YouTube kind of said that they will give a million dollars to four people on YouTube to kind of fight a court case if they have to, and Jim Sterling was one of them. But I'm guessing that, that that's not really going to go very far because, I mean, there's like four videos that they kind of said we'll protect these in court and give give a million dollars to these people but okay we're going to turn right here I should probably be paying attention to the game a bit more but yeah I mean there's only four videos that kind of got this protection I'm guessing that it's probably going to stay at a four for a while this isn't kind of a, it's not kind of blanket protection or anything because yeah, I would be kind of fascinated by a legal case. There, there have been threats of legal court battles. I know Jim Sterling. There's been a couple of people who've kind of threatened, threat, um, threatened him with legal action. Uh, Digital Homicide quite famously kind of said they would uh, take Jim Sterling to court and never did. Well, I think uh, Jim Sterling and Digital Homicide are kind of on somewhat good terms now. Okay, this guy's overtaking. You can go by. Yeah, the whole copyright thing on YouTube is real bad. Uh, I kind of, I kind of understand why it has to be that way. Just because YouTube are kind of terrified of a big company going after them. Uh, it shouldn't be the way it is. I think the biggest problem is that YouTube is just so uncommunicative. Um, uncommunicative get the word out and communicative if that's even a word but yeah the communication with uh, YouTube are really bad at communicating with uh, people who make YouTube content like there's basically a stone wall if you want to uh, it's very hard to get in contact with somebody at YouTube and again I can't understand why it's that the way it is just because you know YouTube is this I swear it's, it's uh, like the third or fourth biggest website in the world or something. Something like that. And obviously, uh, kind of, these automated systems have to be in place just because it's such a, it'd be a mammoth task to kind of police YouTube without these automated systems. But, yes. But at the same time, they got billions of dollars. I mean, Google is swimming in cash. I mean, surely there must be a better way to kind of do this, sort out this whole kind of uh, syndicate right here. Sort out this whole kind of copyright issue and just the system we got, the system that's in place now is pretty terrible, to be honest. Okay, definitely coming that way. Definitely coming that way. Off we go. Off to Southampton. In fact, we're almost there now. Only uh, seven more minutes to go, apparently. I guess that's it over there in the distance, I guess. Yeah, those are a few little thoughts though on the whole kind of uh, YouTube copyright system, I guess. YouTube in general is just a an odd beast of a website. 
I certainly wouldn't want. I certainly don't envy the people uh, who work at YouTube because they've. Uh, no, apparently we've got a speeding offence. Yeah, I certainly want to. I certainly want want to be the person who uh, works at YouTube who having to sort these problems out. Okay, well this uh, join the roundabout. Okay, well this bus is in our way. No, we're in the wrong lane there. Just want to go straight over the roundabout. Syndicate. And we are uh, our destination by the looks of it. Cell plan. Let's get in there. Okay, well let's have a go at parking. Turn that off. It's uh, uh let's see, just change the camera angle a bit. I think uh, changing the camera angle will probably make uh, parking a bit easier, I'd imagine. Okay, it's looking good. Just to change the camera again. Okay, we need to uh, change gear, of course. Oh, I can't see because the fucking wheel's in the way. Into reverse. Okay, well, let's go back. Oh, balls. It's not going well. No! Not a good start. Okay, let's go back into drive. Right, let's straighten the wheel first. <laughs> oh, no. Into reverse. I'm so used to um, holding left, like, uh, open world games have kind of taught me to kind of, uh, you know, left, right trigger. I'm playing with the Xbox controller for the, well, playing with Xbox controller and keyboard and mouse. Just because driving with a keyboard and mouse isn't really that fun. The open world games have kind of taught me that left, that, um, right triggers accelerate, left trigger is reverse. So I'm kind of still getting used to Oh, kind of changing gear thing to reverse. Now we fuck this up a bit. Our uh, track is not straight. All right, let's go forward again. We'll uh, have another go, and if not, we'll just uh, give up. We can't do it. All right, track's nice and straight, is it? No. So you want to get the truck nice and straight in front of the parking space and then just reverse back. It's not that difficult. No, 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 no. Oh no. You know what? I uh, will leave that for now, I think. Because it's, uh, yeah, you don't want to watch me just fail at parking over and over again. Right, we'll go. We've got some money, got some experience. Sweet. Alright, let's continue. Let's do another job, shall we? We'll do, uh, we'll do one more job and then, uh, I think that'll probably be enough for this episode. Episode one, of course. So we're in Southampton. So we want to get a job from Southampton to Dover or to Calais. Okay, we'll go to Dover. Oh, why not? Twenty-three eighty-nine euros a mile. Three thousand six hundred ninety-one euros. Oh, we'll, we'll take this job anyway. I think we've actually lost money, I think. I think we're actually in the hole at the moment. Uh, okay. We've got mail, apparently. Oh, balls, what are we doing? I don't know what's going on here. 
six, seven, F eight. How do we look at our mail? There we go. Not that interesting, really. So, let's uh, turn the engine on. We're in a new truck, of course. Let's share reverse. Let's get out of here. So, how far back we go here? Not very far is the answer. So I guess we're just gonna have to kind of uh go this way and kind of just very slowly make our way out, I guess. But it was a bit of an awkward spot, didn't it? Yeah, we're gonna crash it if we're not careful. Alright, let's get out of here. So I'm just gonna just gonna um Kind of thinking of a new topic to kind of talk about. I mean, uh, you mentioned Street Fighter Five. I mean, you kind of mentioned the whole uh, copyright thing. I'm just thinking, what else is a uh, to get on the right side of the road for a start? What else has been going on recently? It's been a pretty quiet week, on all honesty, for uh, for gaming recently. Um. I mean, a few games have come out. Far Cry Pirate. The problem is, I've not really played them. Like, Far Cry Primal uh, came out recently. Not played it. Apparently, that uh, Super Hot actually uh, came out today, oddly enough. Uh, I was expecting that to. Uh, that's been in the work for a while, that one, Super Hot. Hopefully, that's. Uh, apparently, it's really good as well. So, I should probably, um, should probably play that. We've got a whole lot else to really talk about. Um, yeah, I guess I could talk about the channel, how the channel's going. I think this is my uh, video number 18 now, I think this one's going to be. So the channel's going okay at the moment. I've got a problem with uh, my audio, my visual, I guess. Uh, the audio's better now than it was, but uh, I've got a problem with my kind of microphone and that. Oh, we've got new metal apparently. I don't want to see that, I want to see my sat nav. Let's turn left. Uh, yeah, I mean, my microphone for some reason is. Ooh, is a. Uh, has a really hard time picking up sound for some reason. I don't know why. I've got a uh, Samsung CO1U microphone. But uh, when I record, the microphone is. In order to get a decent audio level, the microphone has to be almost on my lips. Like right now I've got the uh, the pop filter is in front of my lips and then the microphone is just behind the pop filter. Uh, if, I if I have the uh, microphone any further away from my mouth it comes out comes across really faint for some reason and the video is really qu um, the, the uh, vo my voice is really quiet in the video. I've, I've had a little look around in the settings and all the kind of volume microphone volume sliders are as high as they go so I don't know why I'm having these problems with my mic I mean it could be a Windows 10 thing so I am uh, using Windows 10 because um, when I bought the microphone I was on Windows 7 but then I didn't actually use the microphone until I started making these videos a few weeks ago so I don't know if Windows 10 has anything to do with it or not possibly yeah, um, and the visuals in my videos are also a problem because I don't know how people do it, but YouTube seems to kind of mangle my videos really badly. Like I'll make a video, um, I render it out. I use Windows Movie Maker at the moment to kind of render my videos, and we need to change lanes here. We're okay though. Yeah, I use Windows Movie Maker at the moment, which I know is not a great. Um, great program for video editing and all that but it's all I've really got at the moment because um, I've had a look but um, video uh, video editing software is like really really expensive and this is just a hobby at the moment this is a uh, like I said the early, earlier in the video I've, uh, I've not made a penny off of these uh, videos yet 
Now I probably won't make a penny for a long time the way it's uh, going at the moment, which is fine. Because, you know, I'm just uh, seeing where this is going to go, this whole YouTube thing. If it's a hobby, it's a hobby. That's fine with me. But, uh, yeah, somehow people on YouTube get those, like, really, really nice quality videos. And my videos look really nice as well, you know, the 1080p videos. Uh, and uh, after they render out in Windows Movie Maker, they look, you know, nice and crisp. But then after uploading them to YouTube, they kind of... Some of, the, some of them have come out looking okay. Some of them have come out looking, like, really, really murky and kind of blurry and not don't look very good. Um, one of the very first videos I made on uh, Retrovirus, that, look, that video looked pretty awful, to be honest didn't look good at all. I think that um, games that are um, games that have a lot of movement and have 3D graphics seem to fare worse than kind of 2D games. Like uh, I did a video on Super Trench Attack. That was one of my early videos, Super Trench Attack. And that video turned out quite well, but that was just a little uh, 2D little top-down game, that one. And that one turned out alright. But uh, yeah, I don't know how I don't know if I've just got my settings wrong or something. I mean, I'm pretty much a noob at this whole kind of uh, making videos thing. So maybe we'll kind of figure it out eventually. I mean, it would be nice to ask for help, but of course there's uh, fuck all people watching these videos. I mean, almost nobody has watched any of my videos. I've got a few, a few views, but no one has really watched my videos, unfortunately. Boo-hoo to me, I suppose. I'll figure it out. I mean, maybe using a proper soft, maybe using some proper software would help. But I mean, I can't really justify spending a few hundred quid on some video editing software when I'm just making these kind of little casual little YouTube videos. The channel's going okay. I'm quite happy with it. I'm having fun making these videos. Things are improving. I've got decent thumbnail. Well half decent thumbnails on my videos because when I started I just kind of just uploaded them and did bother with the thumbnails but mm, you know I make it thumbnails my commentary is getting better I think uh, a bit less dead air in the videos now than they used to be just got to keep uh, keep plugging away at it maybe one day someone will uh, help me out and give me some views and some all that kind of stuff We're just trucking along, but yeah, YouTube is a. I've uh, uh, got another speeding offence. We're in the hole. I think I think pretty sure we're minus five thousand euros by looks of it, which is not good. I should probably be aware of my speed, to be honest. I'm not really paying attention to the, my uh, speed. Yeah, it's a tough game, YouTube. It's uh, pretty brutal out there, and uh, if you want to. Uh, Make a name for yourself on YouTube. I think the problem with YouTube is just establishing yourself. Like once you get the ball rolling on YouTube, kind of uh, a lot of YouTube video, a lot of U um, YouTube channels start off small and stay small for a long time. But once the kind of uh, the snowball effect kind of kicks in, you're laughing at that point because uh, I think Angry, I'm um, Angry Joe. He's obviously been making uh, videos. I'm not really a huge fan of, Ang of Angry Joe, if I'm honest. He's okay, but I'm not a huge fan of him. But uh, his he uh, has been making videos online for a good like five years or something, five or six years. And sort of like for the first four years, he was like barely nobody knew who he was. He was just a guy putting videos up, and he got a small little fan base going. And then, kind of, as time went on, it slowly, slowly gain, gaining uh, fans and people watching his videos. And then, all of a sudden, he's got like 2 million subscribers and he's uh, like this huge YouTube channel. But, you know, it took him years to get there. So, you know, I'll keep plugging away. Keep plugging away. Okay, uh, okay, our speed limit is down there on the bottom left of our sat nav. So, it's 60 at the moment, I think. We're going 37, so we're okay. Well, he's turning. Okay, we're going to have to turn as well. Because this uh, motorway is coming to an end. 
obeying the traffic laws like a good little boy. I do hate bad drivers on the road, by the way. Uh, I know my uh, my driving so far in this has been okay, I guess. I've got a couple of speeding tickets. But yeah, there are some uh, mad bastards out there on the uh, on UK roads. I've seen some pretty dodgy stuff out there. Especially uh, seeing as I ride a bike a lot on uh, the UK roads. There are some dodgy, uh, dodgy fuckers out there. The worst is the people who kind of overtake you on a bike and give you like an inch of room as they go by. They are the worst. And obviously, uh, I've seen some pretty o pretty dodgy overtakes in my time as well. Of people, uh, I once saw somebody. Um, well, I've seen a few near misses. That's, I'll uh, put it that way. In my time. I think the biggest problem with people driving like uh, stupid on the road is I don't really mind people you know, speeding or driving mad when they're putting their own life on the on the line you know if you want to drive like crazy and kill yourself then go ahead I don't really give a shit but then when you're driving on a public road whoever your road users you've got to show a bit of respect to other people's lives as well because if you have a nasty crash and you die, chances are the person you smacked into is probably going to die as well. Or at least be seriously injured. And some people uh, don't seem to care, they just drive like nutters. Put their life on the, you know, put their life and other people's lives at danger. I like to think I'm a pretty decent driver, if I'm honest. At least now. I think when I started I was, uh, you know, everyone when they start is a bit crap, a bit of a crap driver when they start out. But I uh, passed my test a couple of years ago and I think my driving's okay. I certainly don't uh, drive dangerously on the roads. I don't really drive much at all now. I just kind of bike everywhere now. Okay, I've only driven a car like maybe half a dozen times, well, no, maybe a dozen times in the past year. I mean, driving is just, uh, it's not cheap uh, running a car. It's much cheaper running a bike than it is a car. So yeah, I think in the next episode of this Let's Play, I'll pr probably, uh, do a bit more preparation. This is just a kind of spur of the moment thing that I've just come up with. But the problem now is that I've kind of uh, run out of things to say. Really, I mean, I kind of ran out my first two topics quite quickly, and I've kind of um, just talking about whatever kind of comes to my head now, just to kind of uh, get us to the end of the video. Because I don't want to. Uh, the one thing I don't want in my videos is to just have there be a lot of dead air and just. You know, it's it's pretty boring. Uh, the whole point of these videos is to, to a certain degree, be entertaining. But it's also, uh, certainly in the let's play, it got to be entertaining. I mean, in my other videos, I uh, tried to be informative as well as entertaining. Whereas in a straight up let's play like this, I got to uh, keep people's attention. I can't just not talk for too long. I think that's probably my biggest worry with this uh, YouTube channel now. Is it just uh, people getting bored of really the videos because they're a bit dry, I suppose? But, um, I don't know. Just uh, still testing the waters. We're here at Dover anyway. Ooh, got the burps. Got to have a speeding offence. Nice. And I really need to watch my speed. It's 30 miles an hour here. Change lanes. Incoming. We're up to over this uh do this delivery and we'll uh wrap up episode one of Euro Truck Simulator, the let's play. Like the red light, so we shall uh, wait. Put it in neutral. 
So you don't roll away. So yeah, so far I'm uh, quite liking uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2 so far. It's a... It's an odd one because uh, it, you think a game like this wouldn't be fun, I guess. And in a way it's kind of not fun because uh, we're just kind of driving this big truck down down the road with not a whole lot happening. Which is kind of funny because uh, that was kind of a big criticism against uh, the game. What was it called? Oh. Drive Out or something. I played it a couple of videos ago. Uh, my big complaint was that there was a big empty road and nothing going on. Although there's more going on, with, it's more uh, going on in this game than there was in that one. But yeah, the game like this shouldn't really be that enjoyable, really. But uh, you know, there is a there's a certain enjoyment to be had from the mundane, I suppose. I mean, they really did a they did a nice job with this game, though, nailing how it feels to drive a truck. I say that I've never actually driven a truck myself, but uh, you know, it's not it doesn't feel like driving a car, driving this truck. It certainly is a. They weren't lying when they called it a simulator, I guess. It's uh, pretty, uh, pretty cumbersome. This big truck. Um, yeah, um, uh, they uh, they did actually put out American uh, Truck Simulator not long ago. Having a, apparently, it's pretty much the same as this, from what I can tell. Okay, well, let's uh, drive into here. Let's park the truck up. Well, of course, you have to reverse in. Can we just park it like this? Pretty sure we have to reverse it in. Yeah, we do. Alright, well, I suppose we've got to have another go at this. Okay, let's put it into drive. Turn the truck around. All right, let's go nice and straight. Hit reverse. Truck nice and straight. Get the wheel nice and straight. Ooh, we're not doing too bad a job here. See what we're doing. Well, that's better. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, well, let's turn the truck around a bit. It's not a crash. I'm reversing that. Look at the wheel, is kind of tricky. Alright, let's go back slowly. Oh, we're not going to be able to do this. Oh, fuck it. Let's, uh, let's get the bark in. Alright. So we got, uh, got some money experience. Let's uh, continue. All right, well that's a uh, Euro Truck Simulator, our first episode of our let's little uh, little let's play. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm just kind of uh, like I said, testing the water with this let's play. Hopefully, the net, yeah, I'll try and prepare some, uh, be a bit more prepared for the next episode of my uh, little topics I'm going to discuss. But that'll do for the first episode, and I shall. Oh, I've been Jacob, of course. I've got to nail the outro. I mean, Jacob, leave us a comment below the video. That would be really helpful. I want some feedback to my videos. And I'll see I shall see you in episode 2 of Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.